Hey, what's that? What's that? It's your boy JB Singh. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Real Asian front line out here. That's who I am. Represent. I was, I was a real Asian with attitude. Who put it down on this motherfucking street? You feel me? Real front line. That's what I am. But uh, yeah, I just want to introduce uh, to y'all the homie right here, uh, Muhammad Amar. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. You have a prepaid call from an inmate at Bell, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using. How's your brother doing today? Oh, I'm good. Yourself, brother? I'm doing all right, man. Taking it one day at a time, one step at a time, you know? I hear you, brother. So what you go you, by? Uh, I go by Ski to Rock. Or Ski, right? Ski or ski to rock, because back in the days, the the rock stands for Crips down in L.A. Slang for Crips. What's your nationality? Now it's like I'm black. Were you a part of any gang groups, prison gangs, or organizations? No, I just been part of the street gang. And just been repping that for a very long time, and. Uh, Finally came to my senses and got up out of that. That took a long time, though, brother. So where you from out in the streets? So um, I'm out of San Fernando Valley, and uh, and the actual gang is called uh, Original Valley Gangster Crips. And they're out in the San Fernando Valley. What made you join? Um, originally... I started off as a basketball player. So uh, all of the actual gang members, they were my friends. So they used to have these gang meetings at the park. But I would go to the park to practice basketball. And uh, they started getting into it with other gangs and other dudes, right? And they started getting shot and murdered and stabbed up and all that. So I wanted revenge for my friends. And so that kind of I kind of got drugged into it. Were you convicted of? Uh, second degree murder, a drive by shooting. How long was your sentence? I've been in here uh, for um, for uh, 15 years to life uh, with a five year gun allegation, making it 20 to life. I've been here since uh, 1991. When you first when you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And when you first went to prison and hit the main line, what, what was your mentality? When I first got sentenced, man, um, that was that was that was the roughest day in my life, literally, because my mother was there. She's gone now, rest in peace, right? And my favorite auntie was there. You know, she she's gone now, rest in peace. And uh, I felt like crap, bro. Because I knew I let my mom down, I let my aunt down, you know, got my family name, I put dirt on the family name because now I'm going to the penitentiary for gangbanging. And my mother and my auntie, when the judge said life, they actually got up and started fighting the sheriffs trying to get me up out of there, right? But the sheriffs, you know, they understood they, they went easy on them. And plus they were women, right? So they went easy on them, man. But I just felt so bad, man. And uh, I think about that to this day. To this very moment, I, I I wake up from sleep that very moment right there. It's like a nightmare. It won't it won't go away. It won't leave me alone. You understand? And so throughout the years, that's that's part of the thing that made me want to back up because I didn't do right my, by my mother when she was alive. But I'm doing everything that I can do uh, to be right by her. Uh, you know. And this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And then when I went to the main line. When I went to the main line, the first main line I went to was Calipatria. And so we were hearing about Calipatria all in the county jail. I'd never been to prison before. And that main line was a level four main line. And it was before they had the the, the, the 36 millimeter block gun. And so that's just a, a like a stun gun, right? Uh, like a block gun to stop you from fighting and all that. It's not lethal. It's not supposed to be not lethal. But back then, they didn't have that. They only had the... the, the um, uh, maybe 14, right? So that's lethal. That's a rifle. And it will shoot you over fights and stuff. So when I first went, I was very scared. I'm not going to lie. I was on the main line. It was hardcore. Everybody hardcore gang member. Everybody flagging. And uh, 
And uh, once my once my once my gang found out that I was that I was there, they all came to the cell. You know, they had a you know little care package for me, little food, you know, stuff like that, right? And uh, they started running the penitentiary down to me. That was a process. So, and that took a long time for me to understand how how the penitentiary works, the do's and don'ts, the wills and the wants of the state penitentiary. It's a lot that you gotta learn, especially in the name of and who did you run with? Uh, I run with the case of Crips. Or basically the Crips. Do you have to make a name for yourself? Man, I had to, man. I had to. It, I was scared doing that. Because, I, like I say, right, when you're throwing down, and the, and the gunners, the ex military, they got these dudes in the tower, they've been in wars. So they're very good with their rifle. And they can pluck an apple off from 100 yards from the football field. So when I used to fight and throw down on the yard, throw down the ice, go down in the kitchen a few times, right? And I could hear them rack it, bam, bam, you know, rack it, shh, shh, one in the chamber, right? And I'm like, damn, man. I was just getting tired of that, right? But I knew that I had to uh, get them fools up off of me or I was going to get ravaged. You know, they'd run over you. You know, they'd try to rape you. To turn you into a woman, all kind of stuff, right? Just way off stuff, man. So, yeah, I, uh, I had to fight a lot. I broke my hands a lot. But uh, they started slowly letting up off of me. And then uh, I had a few OGs who used to school me. And they used to say, hey, okay, you know, keep training, keep training. Stay over here with me. And I'll school you, you know. And they schooled me on everything. We work out. And they showed me the importance of staying physically sick and staying disciplined, keeping my mind clean, keeping my mind clear. So that I won't become an animal. They told me, don't become an animal in here. You become an animal. You ruin any chance you ever have of, uh, of getting out. Um, do you ever do a shoe term? Yes, I've done a shoe term for, uh, for a stabbing. I, I did a shoe term that took me to high desert. I didn't go to the, the regular shoe. I went to... Uh, place they call High Desert, and they got a shoe term in High Desert, I guess because the shoes were full at that time, and it took me to High Desert, all white penitentiary, wolf. everybody in there white, man, and they, they might have one black officer, it looked like a raisin and a bowl of cereal, and a bowl of milk, a bowl of milk, with, with one raisin in there, that's how the officer looked, so that was real rough, because they was real scandalous in the shoe program right there, they, they covered the windows up, when they come in to beat you down, let's say you get into it with a cop or whatever, right? But they come in to beat you down. And they come in like 10, 15 cops at, at one time with four cameras and all that, right? Not too long ago. And they just put these blankets up over your window so you can't be no witness. And you hear the dude that racked the door and they go in there and get him. And they have him in the bedroom beating him down. They're beating him up, right? And you hear him and they're hollering for his life. Beating him down like Rodney King. They just beat him. And they got a couple murders up there. You know, all kind of stuff. So, you know, that, that was a real rough experience, too. And when I finally got kicked out, I, I went to New Folsom. That was another experience. Because you got to pull, when you get out of the shoe program, you just can't go back to an easy main line. You got to show that you're not a threat to the prison population. You're not pushing politics, you're not dangerous inmates, stuff like that. So they send you to this other maximum security um um, um, level prison, right? You gotta bring three years clean. You gotta show them that that, that, you, that you want to program, you're not a threat. And you gotta bring three years clean. So they sent me to do Folsom to bring three years clean. And that was that was tough, but uh, I did it. So you're interested in uh, gang and prison prevention? Can you tell us why? Uh, because I was deceived, Bruce, and um, the same people that, that I was trying to save and help, they, 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 they eventually uh, they turned on me, man. You know, they, they helped the police put me away. And my mother was looking and she used to say, man, I'm telling you that fool right there ain't no good. He don't mean you no good. He's not your friend. I want that fool over my house. Don't be bringing them, them dudes in my house. Stuff like that, right? She used to get into it with me, but I'm like, but he's my friend. Ma, that's my friend. Man, that nigga ain't your friend. Don't bring him over here no more. And we used to get into it. But then I seen him, man, when he was on the stand, he used 
pointing me out and telling on me and stuff, right? And uh, it's just incredible, man. I was so hurt. You know, I'm on this brother's phone right now. Uh, why, are you, why are you playing, man? The bro okay, they're coming right now, Oof. So they come up for their phone. Oh, you got to go. All right, then, Oof, just call me back whenever. Yeah. I got you. Thank you, Oof. So you ran with the Crips, right? Yes, sir. I ran with the Crips. Uh, can you elaborate on uh, the the Crip car and um, and the and rules and the regulations of the Crip car? Um. Well, for us, I was I was. You got various Crips, and they all don't get along, right? So, and coming out of L.A., I was on the West Side, and so. Uh, you got the, the, the gangster crips. Um, you got the, the, the neighborhood crips, right? Uh, and that's part of the 60s, right? That's Nipsey Hussle's crew. Uh, and they, they do the old thing, right? Rolling, right? Everything is rolling with them. And the reason why it's rolling is because every number got a zero to it. It's like a tire, right? So you can roll a tire, you can roll a zero, right? So it's the 60s, then you got the 100s, then you got the 40s. Stuff like that. Um, and that neighborhood, neighborhood Crips, Rich Rolling. That's 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 their slogan. So with the gangster Crips, right? The gangster Crips, uh, they're GCs, right? So everything with the gangster Crips is number seven, right? Seven times, right? For the G, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? You're kind of worshiping the G, right? For gangster, right? And your opposing forces will be. Um, oh, and when you greet each other, when you greet each other when you go into county jail, when you go to any penitentiary, right? Uh, when you step in there, you want to holler out, you want to holler out your slogan, because you want to see if any of your people up in there. Not necessarily from your gang, but GC's all over the state, right? Anybody connected with GC, gangs equipped, right? So you go and you step in the county jail, you holler out, move in. What's up with that moving gang, right? And then some other brothers and some other sales or whatever. What's up with that moving gang? Nigga, where are you from? And then you holler out your set. I'm from the Ridgeland Valley Gangster Crip. Okay, this is what you, what you want. From Full Trade Gangster Crip. And you got another brother over here. Who's you, you up? From A Trade Gangster Crip. Five Trade Gangster Crip. Eight Eight Gangster Crip. Uh, Marvin Gangster Crip. And it goes on and on. All these different sets, all these different clicks. It's gonna stop. It's gonna start hollering out, right? And uh, and um, so your opposing forces with the gangsters, even before I was doing it, the OGs had got into it with the neighborhood. The gangsters and the neighborhood are eternal enemies. And that's from wars that happened all the way from the 80s when gangbanging was at an all-time high. And dudes start killing each other's mamas, uh, brothers and sisters getting personal with it. They're trying to catch your mama now, right? They're trying to make it hurt, right? And I was in there. Those are legendary crips, right? Legendary in hoods, neighborhoods, legendary gangster crips, right? They were in there, right? And uh, I'm buffing on the iron pit, right? And when you buff on the iron pit, you, you gotta you just have to buff it with your car. So even when you got the crips right there, and the bloods over here, everybody got to buff with their own people, right? You got the, the back then it was the others, which is the Asians, the Usos, stuff like that. And you got the Southsiders, and you got the whites, and you stay in your own weight pit at all times. And then so even with the Crips, when we were in our own weight pit, you got to you got a buff with, with 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 a fellow uh, member of uh, of what you weapon. So you got to buff with a, a fellow gangster. You don't got to be exactly from your neighborhood, as long as he's repping gangster Crips. You can even have gangster Crips all the way upstate. You got the 44 GCs out of Stockton. They're gangster Crips. So whenever we in prison, gangsters moving. That's our slogan. We moving. Everybody's moving. All together as one. Move together as a collective because that's how you stay protected and that's how you live to see another day in the life of gangbanging. Hoover's the same way. Hoover's, uh, they groove. That's their thing. They don't cut you, they don't blood you, right? They, and sometime in the mid 80s, they kind of turned into assholes. They used to be crips. They used to be crip gangsters back in the 80s, right? But once the war started going on between them and the 60s, then they even got into it with the gangsters. The war started getting into it with everybody. The East Coast, they didn't give a damn. 
because they all up and down Vermont, uh, uh, the street Vermont, it's all kind of hoovers, right? They got big sets, seven fours, nine deuces, 107, five deuces. Those are big clicks. And they hold sometimes like, I don't know, man, 80 to 100 dudes in a click. You feel me? So when they all come together, it's all bad. So uh, that's how that goes. Um, but in prison, under the prison rule, right, that's the street rule, but under the prison uh, uh, constitution, so they got the blue notes, um, uh, and, and you have to be uh, this constitution. When I first failed, they tried to recruit me. That's a blue note. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And I can always remember, right, when I, when I, when I was in the park playing basketball, and, and the OBGs would be here having a gang meet, and, and they used to be talking about prison and homies in prison and all that, right? And so I just kind of merged over there and kind of catch wind of the story when I was a kid. And I would hear the stories, right, about dudes who picked up the paper that quits under their door. You cannot read that constitution because once you read it's a trick, right? An automatic manipulation. And if you're in there with somebody righteous, if you're in the cell with somebody righteous, your OG, first thing he'll tell you, hey, y'all, don't read, don't read that paper, man. Slide that paper back under that door. Matter of fact, slip that damn paper under the door. And then you want to get at whoever on the, hey, look, hey, cuz, uh uh, not up in here. Don't, don't bring that up in here. The second one, that's what OG did for me when the paper slid. But I wasn't going to read it anyway because I had already learned from the days in the park when the homies were schooling me, the big homies were schooling me, don't ever pick up that paper, Skeeter Rock. Because once you pick up that paper and you start reading the paper, you, you're giving your pledge, you're giving your, your alliance to the Constitution, to the Crip Constitution. You don't want to do that. That's when they're going to use you and abuse you. Send you at officers with knives. Send you at Mexicans with knives. Send you at white boys with knives. At that time, you're expendable. You feel me? You're like a puppet on the string. But if you don't read it, and you don't have to read it, right? Then you pretty much freelance. Do what the hell you want to do, as long as you pay attention to the penitentiary laws. So I never, I never, um, we had no constitution. I didn't need to read no constitution. Uh, the gangster Chris, they took, they took good care of me up in there. As long as I represent it, they just wanted me to represent. And I represented to the best of my ability. I started getting pretty good at it. And uh, then my name started traveling all throughout the state. I went from down south, and they big homies were saying about me up north. And then uh, I was on a roll call. They put me on the roll call when the big homies said, hey, who's down there with you? And so everybody that's relevant, they had your name on the roll call, they'll give a list. And they'll, they'll give a list of who's down here, you know, and who's repping. And then I found out that my name was on the roll call. I never intended for it to be like that. I never intended to be no hardcore gang member. But um, I don't know, man, fate. And that shit just got out of control. It just it started taking over me. Because I started getting mad. And I could see dudes for, for, for who and what they were. I, I, I knew they were no good. And one day the hooves almost killed me at 01. I was fighting five of them on the tier. And this when I had my size on me, you know, I could throw down real good. And I was like, uh, I think I was 31. Yeah, no one. And I got into it, man, with a Hoover dude, because he wanted to go in there, rape my celly, and rob my celly, who was a non affiliate. But I liked him, my celly, and he was a youngster. His name was Mel, right? He used to call him Mary Mel. And uh, he used to keep him in here for robberies. He used to do these robberies, and he would hide, he would hide his money, right? Hired to bury his money, right? So eventually he got caught. But the money was still buried. So he told his pops, hey, pops, uh, I'm getting bad up in here, man. Let me just go dig that money up, you know, and send me some money. So pops went down the money up, sent him some money, he started doing good, going to canteen, you know, uh, getting packages, stuff like that. But the Hoovers, they seen this, and they seen that he wasn't connected with nobody. They call you a straggler, or you're a straggler if you ain't banging, or you're a non-affiliate, and that's that's not good, right? In prison, especially level four. So they went to jacking, and I said that's not going down. And so the Hoover said, "Look, well, we got to see if you're a punk or not, man. If he fights for his shit, we'll leave him alone. If he don't fight, then we got to have him." 
So I told him, I said, look, now, this is crazy. You don't run with nobody, right? You're not my homie. You're not my, you're not my homie from my hood, right? But I got love for you, you my son. I'm not going to leave you for dead, right? You got to fight one of these hoods, man, over here, right? We're going to get somebody your size and just go head up with him in the cell. Whoop his ass, man. And I'm going to be right there. I ain't going to let nothing happen to you. I promise you. So they sent the young Hoover in there, right, to fight Nelly Mail. And Nelly Mail, he did well. He was getting into his program. So I look at who it did, and I said, look, man, you see my family going down for this shit. You got to leave him alone. He's not a punk. You hear me? He just ain't banging. So we came to an agreement with Brandon and there. We broke it up. And I was supposed to be that. But then, a week later, who would be, I guess, and that was the leader, right? Who would be, right? And uh, he's also a legendary gang member now, right? Who would be from 74 Hoover. He came back with his crew, and he was feeling some kind of way because he didn't like that outcome. So they called me, they waited till I was away from the cell. And I seen him, somebody pointed out to me, one of my homeboys pointed out, hey man, who was trying to get in your cell? So I looked across the day room, I see this fool tapping on the door, trying to get the tower to open the door. I see Nelly Mel at the door, scared as hell. He got like four hoovers with him. They're trying to get in the cell, they're trying to get my cell. So I run around there. I don't even go get no homeboys, I run around there by myself. And um, I confront the hoover team. And I said, hey, cuz, my brother told you, leave my damn family alone. He already fought what I already had, an agreement. Now you up here, all these damn hoovers trying to go on my cell. And he said, look, man, I felt disrespected, this and that, and that. So I just took off on him. And I knocked him out. As soon as I got on him, right, the hoover got on him. I knocked out another hoover, right? They trying to throw me over the tier. And one of my homeboys, we were doing six months. He had six months to go home. He messed up the state to save my life. He ran up the tears, named Big Head, bless his heart. He ran up the tears under gun coverage because they threw one in the chamber. And he, and he hit one of the hoovers that had my leg and he let me go. And then we threw down there, 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 there. Gang cop came, sprayed us up. Ooh, he us to the hole like that. I'll never forget those moments, though, but uh, it, it's, it's pretty rough up in here when you're on the mainline gang. But it's not for everybody. Plus, what you got to say to these youngsters that uh that want to join uh gang prison gang groups and organizations? Man, I I know they hear it a million times from other people and stuff. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. They need to hear some dudes that did like thirty years, man, you know, some bullshit like me, right? And I put in all that work for the gang. You know, in the end of the day, you know, my mother's gone, man. My auntie gone. You know, I never got to experience my my, 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 my talent to basketball career, playing basketball in the penitentiary instead of playing basketball for college and the pros. You know, gangs, man, got dudes in the gang. You have 60 seconds remaining. They be having sinister motives, man. They don't mean you no good. They're like puppet masters, and they need puppets. And the youngsters are the puppets. And when they really get bad, and, and let's say some murders go down, and the white man get a hold to them, they're going to fall. I don't give a damn what they say. I don't give a damn how hard they acting. When that white man gets to talking about life in prison and the death penalty and all that, they're going to fall. They're going to fall. Because that's what happened to me. And it was the hardest of the hardest. The niggas I, I never thought would point me out on the stand. They were right there, pointing me out on the stand. And I relive that moment every night. It ain't worth it, man. It really, it's really not. It's a life of misery. I promise you.